The age-old LeBron vs. Jordan debate is still alive and well in 2023. And this year, many LeBron fans, they were hyping up these playoffs the year LeBron would finally pass Jordan and get ring number 5. Now, unfortunately for these people, that didn't happen. LA didn't win the title, they didn't make the finals, and they didn't even win a game in the Western Conference Finals. And looking at LeBron vs. Denver, it was a pretty shaky series with some really low points and a few high moments. And even though he did lose, he made some history in the process, as by being swept, he becomes the only player in NBA history to be swept in three different decades, that being 07, 2018, and now 2023. And how did LeBron James, the so-called GOAT, cap off 2023? By bricking a shot off the side of the backboard and getting ripped on the game-tying layup. Now, with year 20 finally being in the books, what actually changed in the Jordan vs. LeBron debate? In my view, absolutely nothing, as MJ still is winning, having more MVPs, Finals MVPs, Defensive Player of the Years, All Defensive Teams, Scoring Titles, and of course, Championships. The one thing LeBron James has on Jordan is longevity. As playing 20 years, I always say that LeBron James has the best longevity in NBA history. But at some point you have to ask, Michael Jordan played 15 years to LeBron's 20. And despite playing five less years, his accolades dwarf LeBron James. And one thing I do want to talk about is LeBron in the East versus LeBron in the West. As in the Eastern Conference, he dominated when it was weak. But now in the West, it's been five solid years with only one championship and one finals appearance. 2019, he missed the playoffs. 2020, won the bubble championship. 21, got bounced the first round. Last year, missed the playoffs. And this year, was swept by Denver. I'm not going to say it confirms the theory, but it is pretty bad optics of LeBron James in the Western Conference has been nearly as successful as he was in the East with his super teams. And with him losing once again in the Western Conference, here's Nick Wright per usual, taping for his guy and making ludicrous arguments. 20 years old, LeBron was better. He was finishing second in league MVP voting. Jordan was getting bounced in the Sweet 16. At 38 years old, he's far better. He's averaging 30 a game. Jordan was averaging 20 a game for an also under 500 basketball team. He was better, quicker, and faster. Now, stopping that clip right there, I absolutely love that argument. As Nick Wright unknowingly makes a case for Jordan being the GOAT. As when debating LeBron versus Jordan, what does he bring up? LeBron at age 20 being better, and LeBron at 38 also being better. Conveniently, what years did he leave out between Jordan and LeBron? Their entire primes as well as their peaks. That is why Michael Jordan is better than LeBron. His prime, his peak, and how he dominated an era was simply greater and better than LeBron James. And look, I will admit it, LeBron at 20 and 38 was better than Jordan. But everything in between is Michael Jordan every day of the week. And to show you guys how flawed this argument is, looking at a player when they're young and old, and only looking at that, here's Kareem in 1972 in his second season. That year the Bucks only lost 16 games and went 12 and two in the playoffs averaged 27-7-3 on 51.5% shooting. Looking at age 38, in route to the championship, he averaged 21.5 points, 8.1 boards, 4.0 assists on ridiculous shooting. He was 4th in MVP voting, and his Lakers team won 60 plus games. And looking at the NBA Finals, which LA did make, he averaged 25.7 points, outscored Larry Bird, and was the finals MVP. Using Nick Wright's logic of being better early in your career and later, Kareem is better than Jordan and LeBron James. My point being, that argument is so flawed and not how you judge players.
He was better, quicker, and faster. When Jordan was didn't have help early in his career and was getting swept in round one, LeBron was taking Sasha Pavlovich to the finals. I'm sorry to interject really quickly, but Nick Wright lies so much so often, I have to stop this clip right here. Michael Jordan, early in his career, the first three years, yes, he lost in the first round. In 85 to the Bucks, 86 to Boston, and 87 also to Boston. But to say LeBron James in his first three years was just so much more successful, it's a flat out lie. As looking at LeBron's first three years, in 04, he missed the playoffs, 05, missed the playoffs, and 06, lost in the second round. Acting like either LeBron or Jordan just came with the NBA and started winning is simply not true in one of the many lies Nick Wright spews. So what is the Jordan argument? Oh, the prime, the peak of Jordan's career. I will take LeBron's prime of nine finals in 10 years and four championships and four finals MVPs, all of those championships coming against top 15 all-time players. Tim Duncan, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, all of them coming against all-time great players. I'll take that against Jordan's prime. Nick Wright being the absolute weasel he is, He's just pure delusion. Saying you take LeBron's four championships and nine finals appearances over Jordan, that says more about Nick Wright than anything else. As looking at prime LeBron James from 2011 to 2020, compared to Jordan from 88 to 98, MJ has five MVPs to LeBron's two, six titles to LeBron's four, six finals MVPs to LeBron's four, zero finals losses to LeBron's five, nine all-defensive teams to LeBron's four, nine scoring titles to LeBron's zero, and one defensive play of the year to LeBron's zero. Even looking past accolades and just playoff play, Michael Jordan averaged five more points per game on identical shooting splits. He had less turnovers, as well as more steals, and a better conference versus better competition. And I hope you guys noticed something. When Nick Wright compared Prime Jordan versus Prime LeBron, what did he do? He only talked about LeBron James and his four championships and nine finals appearances. And not once. Compared them straight up, look at the accolades, the competition, and the numbers. And looking past Nick Wright, we have a video that actually gets worse than that one. As on TikTok, the garbage platform that is, you have LeBron and fans making arguments like this daily. A fifth ring for LeBron would officially make him the GOAT, and this really shouldn't be a controversial take. If the GOAT was only dependent on the number of rings, then people would make the argument that Kareem or Bill Russell was the GOAT, but we don't because it removes all the context from the rest of their careers. Michael Jordan had a longer career than just the six years he won championships, and during that time, he barely accomplished anything outside of putting up great individual stats. So stopping it really quickly, I am so tired of downplaying championships and winning. Once again, championships, they matter and they're not everything for a player's legacy. But even if they were, Michael Jordan at worst is behind Bill Russell and tied with Kareem. And one thing I do want to highlight, at the very end of that clip this guy said that Michael Jordan, outside of his six championship years, accomplished virtually nothing outside of great stats. Remember that statement, because later on, it will be very, very important. Jordan had three playoff runs before Scottie Pippen was drafted to the Bulls and had a grand total of one win over that span. LeBron entered the league and instantly started carrying his team to the playoffs. When Braun was on the Cavs the first time, not only did they never lose in the first round, but he took them on a finals run and had two other conference finals appearances. Now, stopping it right there, when it comes to LeBron fans, they lie every five seconds. As in his own words, he says LeBron James entered the league and instantly started carrying Cleveland to the playoffs. It takes literally five seconds to figure out that's not true. As like I showed you guys earlier, Jordan with the Bulls in his first three years missed the playoffs zero times, compared to LeBron James, who missed it twice in his first two years. And I do find it pretty ironic how Jordan losing before Pippen and still making the playoffs, that's a black mark on his legacy, a stain. But for LeBron, 
him actually missing the playoffs his first two years as ignored and purposely glossed over. And one thing I wanted you guys to catch, this guy very sneakily said LeBron James made two Eastern Conference Finals appearances, that being in 07 and 2009. Now, why that's funny is because for LeBron James, those runs are highlighted. But for Jordan, remember what he said. Outside of his six rings, he accomplished virtually nothing outside of good stats. Michael Jordan, pre-championships in 89 and 90, made the East Finals. But for this LeBron fan, that didn't happen, and it's not brought up. That right there sums up these debates to a T. You have to hold players to the exact same standard and tell the whole story. As Jordan 89 and 90, he did lose in the conference finals, but lost to the eventual NBA champions. And looking at 89 specifically, he carried a weak team by any standards. And that Pistons team who beat Jordan in the entire playoffs only lost two games, both to Jordan's Bulls. It's also a testament to LeBron's greatness that he was able to withstand all the media pressure because from the moment he entered the league, he was compared to Jordan and his cultists looked for every reason to discredit him. And now at 38 years old, if Bron wins a championship, they will say that it was him getting carried by 80 in the playoffs. But Bron is in year 20 and still performing like a top 10 player in the NBA. A championship this year would be more impressive than any of Jordan's rings and would easily make him the undisputed GOAT. The absolute delusion of these people never ceases to amaze me. As saying LeBron's fifth ring, if he won it this year, would surpass all of Jordan's rings, is a ludicrous take by any standard. As LeBron this year individually had his third lowest scoring post in run, fourth worst three-point shooting run, and I would argue was not the best player on his own team. And I really do question these TikTokers, do they know NBA history and how good Jordan actually was? Look at 91, his first championship. He averaged 31-8-4 with two steals and a block and his Bulls team went 15-2 in route to the championship. In 92, he averaged 35-6-6 on ridiculous 50-39 and 86 splits. He had 16 games of 30 plus points, the most in NBA history, and a total of over 750 points in the playoffs, the most ever. Looking at 93, once again up this play, averaging 35-7-6 on 48-39-81 splits, and in the finals, averaged 41 points per game, the most all time. LeBron this year as an individual player does not come close to prime Jordan from 91 to 93. And if you want to say Jordan, he didn't face tough competition, it was weak, look at 97. Jordan that year for his team let them in points, assists, steals, blocks, and defensive rebounds. And the teams he beat, the 64-win Jazz, the 61-win Heat, 56-win Hawks, and 44-win Bullets. Based off opponent's win percentage, that is the second toughest championship in NBA history behind Akeem in 95. Even looking at 98, Michael Jordan, he was 35 years old, still averaging 32 points per game, and his roster was average at best, as Pippen was averaging 17 points per game and Kukoc was at 13. Those two guys were only teammates in double figures. And even with that being the case, he won the championship with the oldest roster in NBA history. That right there is a quick summary of Michael Jordan and his championship rings. And I hope once and for all, this LeBron vs. Jordan debate and the hypotheticals finally end and stop. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.